when you think about a company achieving the mark of 100 years, it's, it's a really extraordinary event. In fact, the number of companies that existed 10, 20 years ago that aren't here is by far the greatest proportion. So companies that make it to 100 are in a very rare group. So we're really proud of that. And if I paraphrased for you how uh, a company can stay that long, the, the thing I would say to it, it changes. The company has to change in order to have that longevity. Uh, while retaining some very uh, magical aspects that, that make it a special story that carries from generation to generation. So, for example, um, you would find in the very startup of the company that the founder brought 25 patents with him about how to bend simple flat steel into boxes, which allowed us to use steel as a case good or a furniture good and not have it too heavy. Now, the, inter the innovation in engineering for this was extraordinary in its day. And in a way, the company celebrates the engineering and the innovation even today. It, it knows that it, its, its next day is only certain if it you know, masters that. A second thing, when he came uh, to Michigan, Mr. Wege, to start the company, uh, he met Mr. Idema, who was coming out of Princeton, and they had this dream about a different kind of work relationship between management and its employees back in 1912. And it was very egalitarian. The notion that everybody was kind of on a team together was a really special principle. And uh, the company more recently has gone through a lot of restructuring. It, it had to get rid of jobs, you know, here in Michigan. It was really difficult for the culture because of the way we see the equity of everyone's interest in that. It was not an easy decision. And an emotional way to get to that is this notion of being fit for the future. We had to do these things. Probably a third thing is, uh, in the broadest terms, is the way that we watch what our customers wanted and needed. Over the years, the evolution of the company closely mirrors what its customers were driving in terms of demand and, and uh, transformation. A quick example is we're global today not because we had a desire to be everywhere, it's because our customers went everywhere and we had to follow them. The astonishing thing to me was when I was approaching three years ago this 100th birthday, we put a team together and we started to look at various corporations that had achieved this lofty goal and look at how they celebrated uh, that moment. And there's, there's some wonderful companies around the world that, that are brand names that uh, you know have been here for a long time and have achieved this status. But it felt to me like too much of the time, the airtime, was devoted only to the history. And the history is such a rich story that it will never leave the consciousness of our folks. But my belief was that, it, that hitting 100 gave us the right and endorsement to actually speak about why we, we wanted to be here longer. What was it about our uh, command of business, so to speak, that would help us you know, continue uh, down that path and uh, we, we thought for example this is a time in 2012 where the world needs an optimistic perspective about the future you know there's so much news about the stress in the economy the world struggles in various wars and various emerging markets and competition but if you're not careful you'll you'll convince yourself that there there is no future we actually saw the opposite of that so one of the things we did we thought how can we get somebody to speak to that in a promising way. Like if we picked the smartest people in the world, our fear was that if they had to predict the future individually, they would be chided for being wrong and therefore people wouldn't reach out there. So an idea hit us to, to engage 10 year olds. And we did this out of a love for the precociousness and the candor and authenticity of children, but as much about their imagination. and. An extraordinary film was done by a director at the time that we didn't know was going to become an Oscar winner in, in 2012 for another movie, Daniel Young. 
about 10 year olds around the world's view of the future. Now, you're struck by a couple of things when you hear this. First of all, the optimism in the children is the kind of thing we wanted to promote. The second thing that's, that's obvious is regardless of whether the point of view is coming from India, China, or Denver, they have a shared view of the power of innovation and opportunity. It was not cultural or geographical. In every part of the world, these children see the power of innovation. And in my mind, there's a couple of trends that I think are worth identifying. One is, in our lifetime, we've never seen technology uh, slow down. And, and in fact, Moore's Law is, the, is this simple equation that every five years, the cost of your cell phone drops by one-tenth and the power goes up by a factor of 10. So if a cell phone is $399 in 2012, it means it's $39 in 2017. It means it's $3.99 in 2022. And it's, it's hard to imagine that something that's so powerful can continue to be even more powerful. It's 100 times more powerful in 2022 and only costs less than an ice cream cone. Well, in a way, this is a transformative uh, component of why the future is one of optimism. A Maasai warrior in Africa holds more power in his hand today than the President of the United States had to run the government just 15 years ago. So technology has an exponential effect on the potential of change. Steelcase, incidentally, studies intently how people's work lives are changing because of that. And it creates all kinds of opportunity because the spaces are out of date because of the technology. Um, in fact, people can move to spaces now without regard to where they have to work because the mobility is so high. But we still are going to those spaces to make them better. The second uh, persistent trend over time is globalization. So the world always was a globe, you know, we, none of us invented that point of view. But the way businesses worked, they were multinational. In other words, they had holdings around the world. Recently, and certainly more intense in the future, is that the operations are fused globally. So because of technology, you can have teams of people working on a platform of a car, for example that are manned from various countries in the world. They actually join in in telepresence and work collectively uh, to drive the development of products. This is a un unique time in the history of business that you have those kinds of point of view. Now, a sub-story about that that's dramatic is because of what C.K. Perhalde at Michigan called the bottom of the pyramid, the markets that didn't seem to have the wealth, they're creating more innovative ways to actually conquer problems that were, were perceived as too complex or too costly. It's actually helping us in more developed markets. And that point of view is flowing uh, from this kind of exchange. Probably a third thing that would be uh, exciting to, to highlight is material science. So one of the best stories in the world today is the, the story of carbon fiber finding its way not just in tennis rackets or golf clubs, but into the airplanes of the future. So the new Boeing jets are hitting drag to lift ratios that they never thought we'd ever achieve. They're gonna change the way flight patterns happen, meaning they're called thin routes. So we'll be able to have non-stops from points in the U.S. to other points in the world that couldn't have afforded it before. Uh, cars are going to adopt this, and there's an incentive in airplanes and cars for fuel efficiency, but there also is in our world because these are products that people handle and they move and they touch and um, and to have them not cost as much to move around to ship there's a big advantage to reducing weight so so I think the future of material science is a big beginning along with technology and globalization the 
This question of if there's so much change, is that actually kind of a sea of chaos and trouble or a sea of opportunity? An observation that was made is if we understand the way humans react to that, we actually have a clue to what the future can be. So Steelcase has invested an extraordinary amount of time and effort into understanding ethnographically, this is a term which means you follow around people and you observe their behavior. You don't necessarily interview them, you actually study them like an anthropologist would. And we find this persistent patterns of behavior around, for example, how to operate a piece of technology. And we know, for example, that the more complex you make this, the less they'll use things. Now you go, well, that's a well duh, I could have told you that. But generally people won't say that in an interview because they don't want to appear like they, they don't know how to operate something. This insight-driven product development is something that we really kind of fell in love with with our relationship with IDEO 10 years ago. And it's now fueling the company in an extraordinarily proliferate way of brand new ideas. And so the newest one is a concept called Mediascape, where people can come to meetings with whatever object they're using to connect to the web and have that instantly displayed for the rest of the room. Or even more powerfully, telepresent sent to anywhere in the world instantly. So if you have a phone, you have an iPad, whatever you have in content and you're using it and you know how to operate it, you can then drive the meeting and, the, and what others see. And they can instantly grab control of their device and do that as well. And this came from us watching people struggle with just trying to plug their computers in to project them. So I'm, I'm really sold on this virtue being the way that companies will continue to grow in the future like Steelcase. You know, when it came to launching our image into the world, WE was really the only choice for me and my company. Whether we were in need of a website, hosting service, commercial, or a music video, it didn't matter. WE literally does it all. They even produce television shows. And best of all, they provide these exceptional services at unbelievable rates. And because they're skilled at so many things, there was really no need to go anywhere else. Get a website with hosting service for just $14.95 a month. Register a new domain for just $1.99 a year. Get 500 full-color business cards for just $29.99 or 1,000 full-color letterhead for just $149. Call now or log on to we-productions.com.